We're going to concentrate now on foreign direct investment. In my simple way, I look at uh, two things when I'm trying to judge at a uh, sort of superficial level the health of a country. Number one, the performance of its currency, and number two, how much foreign direct investment flows there have been recently. Because that sort of tells you what other people think of the country and therefore gives you a good idea of how it's doing. Before we get into foreign direct investment, let me give you a definition of it. It says, um, this is according to Wikipedia, by the way, so we, we should believe them. FDI is investment directly into production in a country by a company located in another country, either by buying a company in the target country or by expanding operations of an existing business in that country. Let's talk about Africa now specifically. And in the uh, Power Lunch studio in Joburg is Zemedine Nagatu, who is a managing partner at Ernst & Young in Ethiopia. Zemedine, thanks very much for joining us. Um, is that a simplistic way of look at, looking at things, uh, what I just said about the health of a country, currency and FDI, or is, is there some relevance to that? No, there is definitely a relevance to what you just said, uh, although some people would add uh, financing, uh, for example, in terms of infrastructure uh, in that category, but the classic definition is the one you just described. Okay, now Africa is flavor of the month at the moment and everybody's talking about Africa, unfulfilled potential for so many decades and now right. suddenly starting to blossom. Is that blossoming uh, being translated into FDI coming into various parts of this continent? Absolutely, uh, and let me give you some, some data. Uh, we recently did uh, our second annual Africa Attractiveness Survey at Ernst & Young and what we discovered was between 2010 and 2011, FDI into Africa increased by 27% despite the very challenging global economic environment, especially the European debt crisis and all. So there's definitely data that indicates that serious money is coming into Africa, especially in sectors in areas that Africa needs and investors can, can benefit from. In addition to that, when we talk to investors who've actually put money in Africa, uh, again, this survey was of 500 uh, global investors, both from emerging markets from Africa and from the rest of the world, what we discovered was that the 300 out of the 500 have actually already put money in Africa and the response when we asked them uh, when you compare Africa as an attractive investment destination to other parts of the world they were overwhelmingly positive about Africa and then interestingly when we asked the others the, the 200 who have never set foot in Africa or all they heard about is from the media and other things they were overwhelmingly negative so what you have here is a perception gap so, but th the short answer to your question is more and more money is coming to Africa. And at the end of the day, our survey also shows that by 2015, we expect about $150 billion of FDI to come into Africa. So these are solid numbers, indicators that Africa, you, you, may, you refer to it as a flavor of the month. I actually say, I, I'll say it's flavor of the decade and probably the flavor of the century because most investors, the serious money, the thoughtful investors are starting to pay attention to Africa for a number of reasons. I think the fundamentals are, are there. As a billion people, the purchasing power of Africans. I mean, it's interesting to know that there are more middle class Africans today than there are in India. I mean, that by itself should tell you that was according to the African Development Bank. So, this by itself should tell you the infrastructural needs and, of course, the natural resources that the likes of China, the likes of India, and other emerging countries, and even the developed world needs is, is not going to abate even if there are ups and downs. So, the bottom line is this is the African century and we think that the serious money will continue to come into Africa despite some of the challenges that uh, we see even in our surveys. Yeah, the numbers you've been throwing around are quite impressive, but personally I think that that's just the tip of the iceberg and I think the, the compelling thing, if I was to tell anybody about Africa, I would say we're coming off such a low base and there's so right. much to do and at the same time the demographics and the structure of the population really lends itself to massive, massive growth in the future. Is there any particular area, you're based in Ethiopia, in Ethiopia is, is there any particular country in a particular area that is being favoured more by international uh, investors than others? Well, um, you, as you mentioned, I'm based in Ethiopia, although I'm, I'm the head of the Transaction Advisory Service Group for Eastern Africa, so I can, I can share with you what we see in our, in our region and in the broader Africa. Uh, in East Africa right now, oil and gas is, is a big, big area. I mean, it's a huge attraction to the marketplace. Uh, oil was recently discovered in Kenya, and the next one from everything I've seen, there's, there's a new report that just came out last week that there will soon be oil discovery in Ethiopia. And of course, you know about the, the major discoveries in Tanzania. Of course, oil will be coming online in Uganda very soon and in Mozambique. These are 
you know, major discoveries. They're not very small things here and there. So the oil and gas sector is getting a lot of attention. But the consumer product sector, you know, I, I was I at was a, as a, as a dinner the other day with the CFO, one of the biggest multinational companies in the consumer product services, where we recently did an M&A for them. And I was asking him, how's your business going? He said he couldn't have been pleased even better. I mean, he was, they were very, very happy to be in Africa. So the consumer product space, the oil and gas business, financial services in many, and then the telecom story, of course, we already know. But in terms of countries, I start with Ethiopia, which, as you know, is the fourth largest economy in Africa, which came from really nowhere 10 years ago to being where it is now. Like Ethiopia would be a very attractive for manufacturing agro industry, uh, no question about it. The Chinese, the Indians have taken big stakes, and the Saudis have also. I think Kenya will also be very, very attractive. Different dynamics than Ethiopia, but I think Kenya is also. All of East Africa, for a variety of reasons, are attractive. In general, though, I mean, I've said this and other things recently. I was giving a speech in China at the Exim Bank of China conference. If I walk out, and my colleagues at Ernst Young, we walk out of the CEO's office of a major Fortune 500 or a FTSE 100 company and Africa doesn't come up, we will be concerned that that CEO is probably not well plugged in about what is going on globally. So the attention is there. The, s the smart money, the long-term patient capital is starting to come into Africa. Even American, I mean, I, 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 as I say this both as an Ethiopian and as an American, a few years ago you couldn't interest Americans about anything in terms of investment in Africa, but I can tell you right now, even on my desk, we're currently advising probably one of the top three private equity firms on Wall Street to invest over a billion dollars in country, let's call it country X in Africa, which would be unheard of a few years ago. So we see a lot of dynamics. The, the China story, we all know about it, but I think the West is now starting to wake up, especially the United States has started to wake up and say they're not ceding. And you heard uh, Secretary of State Hillary Clinton was here right here in South Africa. She, she, she crisscrossed the continent. I think the message there was America is, is going to start engaging Africa, not just from in the aid front or security front, but economically. And you've seen there was a very large American business delegation that came with her. And I think there was a message there that, you know, this is not just going to be China's play or India's play or some of the emerging market company, countries coming in. The United States is starting. And we've talked to an, a number of American policymakers, and they started to realize that Africa is the place to be. Africa is the future, despite many of the challenges. I mean, earlier, I, I mentioned to you in the survey that we, we did, when we asked global investors what would be a major impediment for not wanting to invest in Africa. And the number one answer, I mean, almost nine out of 10 said uh, political instability. Again, it's solvable, but there are solutions, but African decision makers need to be aware. And the second one, of course, was uh, corruption. And again, there are solutions. Africa is making progress in these areas. In some countries, it's a little early, but others have made tremendous progress. And so these are some of the things that we see in the marketplace, which are now starting to attract really meaningful money into Africa.